the clip showed us earlier, definitely the wellness industry, the fitness industry, uh, even the food industry is trying to basically all capitalize this very narrow window of a month or even a month and a half uh, to get their messages out, get people to sign up for their subscription services or buy their products, sometimes in bulk in the first month of the year. So that's really the goal. And for this broader sort of New Year resolution uh, economy, uh, the whole point is brands trying to convince people that this is the time that they have to make these purchase decisions. And that in many cases coincides with people's own desires as well. So in that attempt then, what sort of deals are they offering and, and how much are people spending? Well, if you think uh, about the food industry, for example, a lot of the delivery companies are trying to capitalize on people's desire to eat uh, healthy in the new year or to become a vegetarian in the new year. So what they're doing is that they are offering these package deals where you basically sign up for uh, the full year or even three months, six months of delivery where you will get a discount off of that. And in other in instances, the travel industry, for example, that's a very strong player in the New Year's or the December and January uh, period where people are planning their holiday travels as well as the travel for the rest of the year. So this is time they're offering coupons or discounted flights and hotel accommodations. The list goes on. Now, what about some of these high-profile partnerships that have been announced? How much do some of these celebrity endorsements matter? Well, one of the examples that I think we've all uh, heard about in recent days is the Oprah, Winfrey, Oprah and the Lady Gaga partnership with Weight Watchers. I think now they're called WW. Uh, the goal is to basically do a around the country road show to promote healthy living and to promote wellness. Uh, these celebrity endorsements definitely work for a lot of companies, but then again, it's not for everybody and it's not going to uh, last a long time because eventually, you know, a lot of people will fall off the bandwagon and, you know, they will stop going to uh, a lot of these events and a lot of these, you know, gyms and activities. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a marketing push and especially for the first quarter, that's almost true across industries. So other than sort of health and wellness, what are some other trends that are emerging that people are taking on as resolutions? Well, uh, a couple of trends that we've been observing is, first of all, financial planning, especially with the younger crowd, the millennials, and also the Generation Y people. As they are moving into uh, sort of more financial uh, independence, they have to think more about investing and saving. So that's why you're seeing financial apps such as uh, Robinhood or uh, Credit Karma, for example, that are also offering a lot of uh, uh, deals or packages trying to get people to be to behave uh, more rationally financially and use these platforms as a tool. And it's interesting because when we think of resolutions, a lot of times we think of people taking things on, but in, th in terms of things like debt, it's really a case of having a different mindset about things you should be taking off your plate. Exactly. Talk about some of these other startups that are really catering to these evolving interests. Well, for startups, uh, for example, there's another startup in the uh, general wellness industry, uh, Casper. They're in the mattress business, so they sell mattresses and, and uh, um, uh, pillows. Of course, this is not meant to be a product endorsement, but what they've been doing is that they're, cap they're, they're capturing people's need to sleep better, to have more, uh, to better rest um, at night. So this is another sort of interesting niche for many startups to be into, not just the way you exercise, the way you work, uh, how well you uh, eat, but also how well you sleep. So this is another sort of uh, segment for startups to, to move into. Now, are there any sectors that tend to lose out as people really try and become more healthy and more aware? Are there any sort of sectors that are, that are losing money now? Uh, losing money in the first quarter of the year is not something anyone wants, but I would say uh, in many cases, if you look at uh, the, some of the more traditional industries, uh, for example, in uh, financial service, especially retail banking for the first quarter of the year, uh, that's not usually a strong start because uh, people are still in holiday mode. Uh, but again, you know, I think everybody across the board, as I said earlier, are trying to uh, relate their brands and their business models to people's desire to set new goals and set new resolutions for the new year. So definitely everybody's trying. And just very quickly, how do all these companies keep the buzz? We mentioned that small window to really capture people, but how do they really keep that money flowing throughout the rest of the year? 
Well, Rochelle, they move on. Uh, the first quarter, I guess the first month of the year is all about New Year's re resolutions, Happy New Year. Uh, February, of course, you have Valentine's Day, March, you know, more festivals coming in. Oh, and let's not forget this year, this January, you have the Chinese New Year coming up just end of the month. So, you know, there will be endless opportunities for businesses to just keep uh, relating their brands and their messages to. Uh, so, you know, they will definitely see even more uh, creative marketing methods, just like the Singles Day on November 11th in China.